Greetings attendees and welcome to this uh, hypothesis social annotation in Blackboard Learn. We're going to let folks file in. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jeremy Dean from Hypothesis, joined here by colleagues from both Blackboard and Hypothesis. Oh, great. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to let uh, Daniel from Blackboard um, speak first. Hi, Daniel. Yeah. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Jeremy. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm more of an expectator than a presenter today, but I did want to take a chance to um, introduce myself. I'm a partner manager here at Blackboard. I've been working closely with Hypothesis for a few years now. I'm very excited for today's session on social and grading annotation. I think it's such an important topic nowadays. Um, and some of you who have been following perhaps the Blackboard News, you may know that Blackboard merged very fairly recently with Anthology, which is another leading provider of EdTech solutions. Um, and now more than ever, we are laser focused on enabling more meaningful and engaging experiences for students and instructors. Now, what does that mean for Blackboard Learn users? I think it means a lot of things, um, but what I think is most important is that we are invested in creating partnerships with strategic, innovative vendors such as Hypothesis to provide great tools that help um, us unlock those intelligent experiences. So that said, I'm happy that we'll all be learning more about social annotation today uh, from our subject matter experts at Hypothesis. And I don't wanna take more uh, out of your time, so I'll pass things over back to Jeremy. Awesome. Thanks so much, Daniel. Um, we're super excited to be here today as well. It's great to hear the news from Blackboard World. Um, coincides with some really exciting news on our end in terms of Blackboard specific developments. And the reason why we wanted to kind of have this webinar at the beginning of this spring semester is because we do have some new Blackboard specific development we've done. I'll, I'm gonna take the rabbit out of the bag immediately and just say we now have an integ integration with Blackboard files. We have an integration with Blackboard groups. We also have an integration with uh, OneDrive, which I know isn't a Blackboard product, but we actually see a lot of our Blackboard users also using OneDrive. So those are exciting and new things to our Blackboard uh, tool set. Um, I am Jeremy Dean from Hypothesis. I'm gonna give a sort of broad introduction to annotation, social annotation, and then I'm gonna kick it over to my colleague, Erin Barker, who is one of our customer success managers, and she'll be walking through the Blackboard specific uh, stuff and, and, and answering questions. So, hi, Erin, good to see you. <laughs> uh, excellent, so there's some Zoom housekeeping. Uh, I think I said this in the chat, but as you're introducing yourself and as you uh, ask questions, please you know, choose everybody um, in the drop down from the Zoom chat. Um, and what does this one say? Uh, I'm not sure what this one is telling us to do, but you guys probably know how to use Zoom. It's been a couple years of living in Zoom. So, but do say to everybody so that we're all, um, we're all on the same page. Um, I'm a, uh, English professor by training and got into this ed tech, uh, space, uh, sort of by accident because I fell in love with the technology of social orientation, uh, essentially. And this is a quote um, that I read about 10 years ago when I kind of made that transition from academia that really inspired me to adopt social annotation in my classroom um, and then to pursue it as a career, essentially. Um, online, a book can be a gathering place, a shared space where readers record their reactions and conversations, actually from the Chronicle of Higher Ed about 10 years ago. Um, especially today, especially during the pandemic, but really just in terms of the evolution of digital text, digital learning, uh, and digital community, we're reading more online. Um, and we need annotation more than ever um, as individuals, but also our students need annotation more than ever to better comprehend when they read online, when they read digital text, and better engage with that content. And there's also these wonderful new opportunities that digital text in networked environments provide in terms of social reading and social annotation. And that's what we're here to talk about today. I'm gonna to share three high level um, takeaways really from instructors and students that have used hypothesis about why we believe and why many of our, our users believe and increasingly more and more institutions believe that social annotation is a critical piece of a uh, student, a teacher and an institution's sort of ed tech toolkit. 
Um, and the first is, is nothing new, <laughs> that hypothesis or annotation makes reading active. As I said, I was an English teacher. I always told students to annotate back when I just handed out paper or had them buy um, you know, uh, paperback books. I always wanted them to annotate um, because I knew as a student uh, that I annotated and that helped me better comprehend and, begin, and better engage with content. And as a teacher, I could see it from the students that were writing in the margins of their texts, um, that they better understood what they were reading, they were better prepared for class. Um, so this is not a, a radical new technology. I'm not telling you to go and teach uh, in some sort of virtual learning platform. Um, I'm telling you, you know, you, you guys have readings and you can add some extra functionality to it um, to allow students to annotate and have conversations on top of that reading. So hypothesis makes reading active. And then hypothesis makes reading visible. And I think this is really a radical new thing. Um, when I had students annotate in, a, in an analog fashion, I never knew that they annotated. I didn't even know if they read. I think a lot of instructors struggle to, to sort of, um, you know, they ask, are my students doing the reading? Um, and they have various ways to sort of test that. Maybe they give reading quizzes. Uh, they stare out into the eyes of their students when they meet face to face to try to see if, if they've done the reading or evaluate class, partition, uh, class participation to see have students done the reading. Well, social annotation with hypothesis allows you to see if the students have done their reading. Um, you can see them in there making comments, creating annotations. And I think more than that, you can see where are they confused and you can intervene. Uh, where are they excited? Where are, is there some particular um, you know, point of debate in a reading where students really got in the conversation about something? And all of this is, is gonna inform how you support your students individually and as a class. Um, being able to see that they've done the reading, being able to see how they've done the reading uh, will better position you to, when you do have synchronous time with them, uh, jump into that point of debate and really start class conversation at a higher level. Uh, because there's already been so much conversation and engagement with the text, you can start off, you know, some teachers say sort of 20, 15 minutes into where you might be in class conversation because you have had uh, students engage with the content and with each other using this tool. And then finally, hypothesis makes reading social. I'm really an old school English professor. I always wanted students to um, go off and get lost uh, in the reading in a book by themselves as kind of individual experience, um, but knowledge is created socially and understanding, comprehension, um, you know, anal analysis and interpretive skills, all of that comes, you know, is developed in a social context. And this is one of the things that students really get excited about with hypothesis um, is that they're no longer alone when they're reading. Um, their classmates are there, they can see what their classmates have said and learn from their classmates. They can see other points of view. Uh, confusing parts of the, of the text might be um, clarified by a student. A teacher can intervene or a teaching assistant can come in and offer clarification where there's a point of confusion. So you're no longer alone when you're reading. You have your community of, of uh, scholars uh, helping you understand that content and helping you dig deeper into that content. Um, and then next, uh, Oop, I can't say. So now I'm going to go into sort of five uh, or six ways. The screen is frozen. Is it frozen for you guys? I've got some weird. Um, yeah. Okay, five ways or six ways to annotate uh, for and with students. The first is just to reiterate that it's not just about annotation, comprehension, analysis, and the reading of text. It's also about developing community in your classroom and on your campus. Um, this is a great way to develop community in your classroom, to have students connect with each other and develop collaborative skills. Um, and we've heard this again and again from professors that yes, it was great for them to better understand some difficult text, but we also noticed that they were working together more effectively because they were so often reading and annotating together that they'd really developed that kind of collaborative uh, collaboration skill set. Second way is just to start off with something uh, simple, like have your students annotate the syllabus. Um, I was thinking this morning, you know, how many times I see on Twitter at the beginning of every semester or middle of every semester, like I, some student asked me a question and it was in the syllabus. Well, uh, if you have them annotate, they're really going to get to know your syllabus. Um, and, and you can clarify anything that, that, that might be confusing in the syllabus. You can highlight things in the syllabus. They can ask you questions. You might get some feedback about the syllabus. Maybe everybody read a certain text the previous semester in the prerequisite for the course, and you can <laughs> switch things up for them. Um, and this idea of annotating the syllabus really can be for um, 
any type of ancillary content that you give to students. It might be a paper assignment where they can annotate it to get clarity or start to share ideas. It might be your lecture notes or slide deck for a lecture that they annotate uh, and maybe you know make connections, uh, get, get clarification or make connections on, on those other types of materials that you might be sharing with students. But really, of course, the tool is used most broadly for you know readings uh, that you assign. Um, and you can just turn this tool on for students to have the ability to take notes online. You know, when most environments, when we read online, we don't have the ability to take notes. And I'm guessing if I took a poll here that some large percentage of you would agree that taking notes while you read for a class is valuable <laughs> um, for your success in that class. And we lose the ability to do that in at least in a direct way when we read online. So just turning this on and allowing your students to take notes and they can take private notes, just you know, private highlights and private notes with, with this tool, um, just turning it on can possibly help them. But we certainly find, and I think Aaron will agree, that the most effective way to use the tool, and sorry, my slides are jumping around here, but my computer is not as fast as my mind. Um, uh, I think Aaron would agree that the most effective way to use the tool is with sort of deliberate, um, guided, directed, exercises. Um, this can be teacher driven. You can, you know, go through a text ahead of students reading it and gloss it for them to help them, you know, find those footholds to get through a text or ask questions uh, in the margins for them to respond to almost like a discussion forum, but embedded in the text. Um, so this can be, you know, you can be the guide for students through a text uh, using hypothesis. Um, but I think the, the, the most powerful and effective way to use the tool is certainly having students annotate themselves um, and having conversation on top of the reading uh, using hypothesis. This can be very open-ended. I need to see two annotations in one reply, or it can be very directed uh, and discipline specific. So when you read this scientific article, I want you to look for these, for three of these five things that are normally appearing uh, or should appear in a scientific article and identify them and evaluate them. Um, normally when we present to uh, schools that are partnering with us and we provide more in-depth pedagogical workshops, we'll talk with a group about, well, what do, you, what do you want students to be looking for when they read? What do you want them doing when they read? And how can we you know, use hypothesis social annotation to help bring some structure to those reading practices? Um, so I think that's the end of my portion of the presentation. I'll just say uh, that um, it's a really exciting time to get involved with Hypothesis. It's not too late uh, for the spring term. We're currently offering uh, Hypothesis pilots for free um, to Blackboard schools. Um, so some of you may already be at institutions. I think I saw some of you were at institutions that already have Hypothesis. If your school doesn't already have Hypothesis, it's a great time to connect with us and get a pilot going at your school. We only need two or three teachers to, to call it a pilot. And like I said, it is free and I don't anticipate that it'll continue to be free uh, in years to come. Um, so give us a try. Um, and uh, you'll be working with somebody uh, like lovely, like Aaron, uh, who's an educator by training and will help you uh, and your colleagues uh, get up and running with Hypothesis. And she'll give you a little preview of what that looks like right now. So over to you, Aaron. All right, give me a second to pull up my slides. And um, also, Frank, I hope hopefully you saw my message in the chat and we'll make sure that someone works with you to see how we can get it at University of Houston. Um, in the meantime, while I'm pulling up my slides, here's what I want those of you who are in this session to do. You actually have to do be active and do something. Take your fingers, walk yourselves over to the chat. Tell me a few things. The first thing I want you to tell me is whether you use Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra. Okay, that's the first thing. Do you use Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra? The second thing I want you to tell me is if you have used Hypothesis through Blackboard before, okay? So those are two things thus far, Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra. Have you used Hypothesis through Blackboard before? And for those of you who have used, who say, yes, I have used it in Blackboard before, I want you to tell me how you have used it in the past. So have you asked students to annotate readings? Have you used it on the syllabus? Have you used hypothesis to build community in your class? Thank you. 
Sorry for the child interruption, everyone. I am, <laughs> thanks, Franny. <laughs> um, I am waiting to see your responses in the chat. So remember, I wanna know, do you use Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra? Have you used Hypothesis before? Um, and if you have used it before, then what have you used it for? And most of you, it looks like you have not used it before. Okay, Shima, good to know. Blackboard. Roberto, I, I'm not sure if you typed this incorrectly or as a joke, but I do like the blackboard burn. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And Petruca, hopefully I said your name correctly. That sounds like a lot to learn all at once. All right. So good responses thus far. As we're kind of going through the next piece, I want you to make sure that you add your questions to the chat and or use the raise hand feature. Um, I'm not sure if you all can see the raise hand feature on the webinar. If you can then, and you prefer to speak your question, thanks Nate for showing me, then feel free to use that. And I am going to actually have Franny or Nate be my moderator for the raise hand feature um, and then see if someone would like to speak. I'm going to do my best to moderate the chat and speak at the same time, but I know that Franny and Nate can also help me too. Here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how hypothesis works, so kind of the basics of it. Then I'm gonna dive into some of the features of hypothesis with Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra. And then I'm gonna show you a quick demo in our hypothesis Blackboard account. If at any time you're like, oh man, that girl from the West Coast, I'm actually from Colorado, but I grew up on the West Coast, speaks way too fast, and I need her to slow down, or I need her to clarify something, then please make sure you add it to the chat or use the raise hand feature. We are all learners here, so don't be hesitant to speak up. So again, we're gonna talk about the how Hypothesis works. We're gonna talk about some of the features of Hypothesis in Blackboard, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like in Blackboard in our hypothesis, um, <laughs> in our hypothesis account, or in our Blackboard account, excuse me. All right, so let's talk about how hypothesis works, the basics of it. When you launch a hypothesis reading or a hypothesis enabled reading from Blackboard, and you want to start annotating this document, whether you are a student or a professor, all you have to do is take your mouse, highlight the text you want to annotate, and then go ahead and type your annotation. I will tell you that the vast majority of professors and students that I work with figure this out quite quickly. Anytime you create an annotation in your course, that annotation can be replied to by anyone else in the course. That reply can also be replied to, and you can have these threaded conversations that link back to the original text. After today's session, this is why I gave you the link to the slide deck in the chat, and some of you may have shown up a little bit later after I posted the link to the slide deck, so if Franny or Nate, you wanna add that link back into the chat, that'd be great. After today's session, if you think to yourself, I need some more resources. Where do I go to get these resources? What you see on the slides right now, these are live links. So you can grab that annotation etiquette for students and do a quick walkthrough on how to teach your students how to annotate. You can grab the adding images, videos, and links to your annotation document or a resource and quickly learn how to do that as well. Let's talk about hypothesis in Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra specifically, okay? If you're using hypothesis through Blackboard Learn, students are automatically logged in and they are automatically part of the course. They do not have to create accounts. They do not need a specific web extension. They do not need to do anything special. They're just sticking within Blackboard. And I think that's a really nice piece of using Hypothesis through Blackboard. Additionally, um, I want to assure you that if you're using Hypothesis through Blackboard, uh, we are FERPA compliant and we do our best to protect student privacy. We do not collect student email addresses and we do not reach out to students or market directly to students. 
Additionally, we are WCAG accessibility compliant. And so if you have students who maybe use screen readers or text to audio devices, those all work with Hypothesis through Blackboard. And I'd be happy to answer any accessibility or privacy questions if you have any of those in the chat. When students log in, they just lo or log in, excuse me, let me back up. When they go to Blackboard and they launch the Hypothesis enabled reading, it just automatically launches for them and they can start annotating. The same goes for you, the instructor. Oh, look, I clicked a live link and then it went to, there we go. We also integrate directly with the uh, gradebook in Blackboard. You do not have to create a separate item in the gradebook. If you choose to enable evaluation when you create the assignment using Hypothesis, then it's created in the gradebook. You can grade the annotations right there and it feeds the gradebook. So let's talk real quick about a few of the features using Hypothesis through Blackboard. Some of these are new, and I know some of you have worked with us in the past, so these might be new to you. Uh, we now integrate directly with Blackboard group sets. So if you have created group sets in your course, you can now assign the Hypothesis-enabled reading to those group sets. What that means is you maybe have divided your class into groups of four, or you've divided your class in half or you've even divided your class into groups of one. You can now assign the hypothesis-enabled reading to that group set, and students will only see the annotations from other members of their group. You only have to create one assignment and assign it specifically to the group set. This, I, I cannot tell you how exciting this is because this is the number one requested feature that I've had from instructors for the past year and a half. So this is really exciting. And if anyone has specific questions on using Hypothesis with group sets, then please let me know. Elise, this is new. Groups cannot see annotations from other groups. This was just released in the past month. We also integrate directly with Blackboard files. So if you have added PDFs to your I'm gonna say this incorrectly, depending on if you're in Blackboard Learn or Blackboard Learn Ultra, to your content collection for your course, then you can just grab a PDF from that content collection. Again, this is also a new piece and a new feature that we've added, also requested by many instructors. Some of you may notice as well that we also integrate with OneDrive now. So if you store your PDFs on OneDrive, then you can grab those and use those with Hypothesis. Julio, the instructors by default for the course belong to all groups, so they can see every group in the course. I think that was your question. Let me know if that was not. Yeah, okay. This is again why I gave you the slide deck. All of these resources here uh, will guide you through any of the pieces you might be interested in. How to add a Hypothesis-enabled reading to your Blackboard Learn course, how to use it with small groups, how to grade, and I will tell you right now that the Student Guide to Hypothesis in Blackboard Learn is very useful, and you can give it to your students when they first start annotating. And Don, to answer your question a little further, um, Hypothesis does integrate with Canvas and with D2L Brightspace. With Canvas, we integrate with group sets or small groups, and we integrate with SpeedGrader um, and also Canvas files. Karen, my understanding is that students in different Blackboard sections can share the same file as long as they're all in the same course. I'm gonna pause a, a quick second or couple seconds here and see if there are more questions about anything I just gave you. Shima, um, and hopefully I said your name correctly, please let me know if I did not. Uh, so Shima, as long as the app is on their phone and it will open in the browser, the native browser on their phone, and it will work. It's small, I mean, I'm old, so I don't wanna read anything on my phone. In fact, I have to read all my documents like expanded 150% or something at this point, um, but it does work.
All right, I'm gonna keep monitoring the chat and thanks to Franny and Nate for also helping me. I'm gonna show you a quick example. Oh, do we need our various copies? Ah, Julio, you do not need the digital fingerprints anymore. It just works with small groups. You're doing such a good job, Erin, that I, there hasn't been anything for me to help you with. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in Blackboard. Uh, if there is interest, I'll show you, after I show you what it looks like, I'll show you how to add it to your Blackboard Learn course if it's already integrated into your Blackboard account at the account level. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've added an article uh, that I wanted my students to read in my Blackboard course uh, called There's What You Assign and There's What They Read. <laughs> if um, any of you feel the need to take a look at this article later, I think it's from Inside Higher Ed, if I remember correctly, I'll have to take a look. Uh, but it's an interesting article on what we assign and what our students actually read. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. And because I added this as a hypothesis enabled reading, you all should notice that the reading shows up here in the center. And on the right side, the hypothesis annotation bar automatically appears. I don't have to do anything specific. I don't have to log in. It's just already there. Um, Rick, you could make single person groups, but once you have made the group and assigned the reading, it gets a little more complicated in terms of mixing up those groups later. It's, there's not quite a best practice for aggregating all of that. So for those of you who are new to Hypothesis, I'll do a quick overview of what you're seeing and how to annotate. Uh, those of you who have had some experience with Hypothesis might notice some things I've added in the annotation bar and think about how you could do that in your own practice as well. So because I annotated this document previous to today's session, I was actually working on this last night, those annotations automatically show up when I launch the document. So I created these annotations myself, but let's say all of you, maybe Michael and Julio and Franny had all created these annotations previously, I would see all of that appear when I opened up the document. If I wanted to add my own annotation, all I have to do is select the text I want to annotate with my cursor, let go of my cursor, choose annotate, and then the text box opens up on the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and type my annotation. And this is not a very good annotation, so don't critique me, anyone. I'm gonna actually give a tag to my annotation because I wanna categorize it later. I'm gonna call this tag question, and then I'm gonna post to the course. Now everyone in the course can see my annotation and can reply to my annotation and post that to the course. It's pretty simple. I would say the barrier to entry is quite low. Most students will pick it up very quickly, even if they're on their phones. I have lots of students um, and instructors who use it on an iPad or a phone. A Couple other things I can do here. I can make my annotation bar smaller or larger, depending on how big or small I want my text or bar to be. Additionally, I can search for any specific students that have annotated, or I can search for tags like question and find all annotations under that tag. You may notice that in the annotations I created last night in preparation for today's session, I have added an image in one of my annotations and an embedded video in another one of my annotations. I actually think more of our students are visual learners than not. Um, and so the more we can encourage them to use visuals in their annotations, the more connections they're gonna make around the text and the deeper their learning will be. Uh, another way to think about this too is I actually have some professors who ask students to um, create video annotations. So they'll create a video of them responding to the text or annotating the text and put that in the annotation sidebar. 
Um, and then other students can see each other and respond to each other's video annotations. There are a lot of questions here, so I'm gonna stop for a second. Um, I'm not sure if it's Christopher or Joella, so I'll say Christopher and Joella. When you create an annotation, there is a post to button, and that is essentially your submit button. Once they post, you will be able to see it as the professor and then consi can consider their annotation submitted. Um, and then I would like to apologize in advance for any names I mispronounce. Lit, hopefully, or Leet. Um, if I wanted to create an annotation without selecting text, I can do what's called a page note. And there's this little icon here, it looks like a post-it. If I select that post-it, I'm going to say, this is a fantastic page note. It creates an annotation that is not connected to any specific text. And so oftentimes page notes are used as summaries of the text um, or questions you may have around the entire text, or sometimes professors use it as a place to put the instructions for annotation, in addition to also putting them in the Blackboard course. Elise, open notebook. If I select the person icon here in the upper right, and then I open notebook, I'm going to get all of the annotations across the entire course. So that would give me all annotations across all documents in the entire course. I could choose just myself and just get my own annotations and use that for notes for writing future papers or research articles or whatever I might need. All right, um, I think what I might do, is there any interest, you can just tell me yes in the chat, this is also how I know if you're awake or not. Um, tell me yes in the chat or no in the chat. Yes, if you would like to see how to add a hypothesis enabled reading to your course and no if you're like, eh, I got it, I don't wanna know. Roberto says yes, Patrika says yes, yes, yes. Whoa, okay, lots of yeses. Let me go back to my course here. You guys are awake. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so before you add a hypothesis enabled reading to your course in Blackboard Learn, it has to be installed. So to get it installed, you need to talk to our education team and probably to your LMS admin. Many of you here may already have it installed. I'm going to show you the most mm, common way it's, at, it's installed in Blackboard Learn. I know that we have a few schools that may be here or representatives, representatives from schools here that have installed it slightly differently. So I'll show you the most common way. If yours does not follow this sequence, then yeah, talk to us. I'll help you figure it out. Okay. When I am in my course, I have to be in the content side. Go to the content side of my course. Then, I select build content. And in an ideal scenario, it's already installed and hypothesis shows up here on this list under build content. Some schools may have installed it such that it's titled something different. I worked with a school recently where they titled it social annotation. Um, I worked with another school where they titled it like the name of the school and then just H. But kind of scan there, see if there looks, if something there looks like it might be hypothesis. So I'm going to choose hypothesis. I'm going to give this a name. I, because I'm an awesome instructor, I'm going to put very detailed instructions here. So some of those instructions might look like find two connections to previous texts we've read and annotate those, respond to two of your peers. This is a really important piece. Usually I have my, Anna, my drawer on Zoom and I think it's been turned off on this webinar. So I'm just gonna do this with my mouse, pay attention. Ready? Do not attach anything. Where it says attachments, 
Do not attach. Do not attach anything. Hopefully everyone got that. <laughs> Don't attach. I'm going to decide that yes, I want to grade this. I'm going to give it 10 points. And then I'm going to hit submit. Usually it'll show up at the bottom of your course. Here it is. Now is the point, point where I'm going to attach my reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch it. And you will see the various options of types of readings I can use with Hypothesis. Publicly available website. That is one that is not behind a username, password, or paywall. New York Times doesn't work because it's behind a paywall. You can save it as a PDF and use it that way. Good question, Shima, and I'll answer that in one second. You can choose a PDF that lives in your Blackboard content collection. You can choose a PDF from Google Drive or OneDrive. And coming soon, not yet available, but coming soon, you can select a book from Vital Source. For if you have a document that lives on your computer, Shima, you can use Google Drive or OneDrive. And then you would choose the upload option. It'll upload to Google Drive or OneDrive, and then you can choose the document. For now, I'm going to choose a PDF from Blackboard because I added some PDFs last night, or I thought I did. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna, I, I failed to add. I'm going to do this microbiology chapter because that seems fun. I'm going to choose my document, hit select. This is where I'm going to choose if it's a group assignment. I don't have any group sets created already, so I'm not gonna choose group assignment. And then I'll hit continue. And there it is, it's ready for your students and it's ready for you to go. I'm gonna go back and stop again and see if there are any questions. And I, I look at Shima's question. Um, Amar had asked if uh, installation with Hypothesis and Blackboard costs money for the school. And so I answered that in the chat. But just to iterate, yeah, that Hypothesis sustains itself by uh, having institutions pay for uh, Hypothesis used when it's integrated with Blackboard and other LMSs. That's how we provide support and pay people, great people like Aaron, to do their work. <laughs> Did you um, see Shima's question or did you already address yes, it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a hand raised. Did you see that one, Nate? Uh, I did not. Yes, I do see a hand raised. That's uh, Kay Adkins. Kay, do you want to, um, oop, the hand disappeared. Kay, did you want to say something? Okay. Um, and then Frank, I, okay. um, just in the interest of time, Frank, I'm not going to go over it again today, but there is that article within the slide deck that walks you through how to do all of that too. So thanks for noting that. I appreciate it too. And then Jessica, uh, yes, you can use the same reading across courses and students will only see annotations from other students within that, their own course. Or group. or group or small group if you've used it with small groups. So I know that was a lot of information. Oh, Sky said 10 points. Uh, where for faculty to grade? Oh, okay. I'm going to actually back up just a bit because Sky asked about this specific one. So Sky said, where do you grade? And then will it be in the Blackboard Grade Center? Yeah. So if I'm a professor for the course at the top of the documents, there's going to be a grading bar. Now there are no students in this course, so there's no one to grade. But if there were students, I could select one of the students from the drop down menu. Just their annotations would come up and I could enter their grade in this box here in the upper right. That would then feed the Blackboard Grade Center. You don't have to create a separate item in the grade book. It's already there.
Elise, you and me both. <laughs> And Rick, I, th I don't know if I quite understand what you're trying to say. A hypothesis annotated Frankenstein, a hypothesis annotated secondary source. Um, I can see what you're saying. Um, so the difficulty is we'd ha you, you have to link to another assignment within Blackboard, and you could, in theory, put the link to that assignment within the annotations for one of the documents, as long as the student was logged into Blackboard, I think. We can talk further about that. That's a bit of a nuanced one. So should you use Hypothesis in your courses, which you're all going to do, then you get to join over 400 Hypothesis partners across the world. Uh, we actually, I think we have some partners in Armenia now, in Ireland, South Africa, um, and in all of the different states. If you can read all of these logos, then your eyesight is significantly better than mine and more power to you. As you're walking through using Hypothesis or thinking about using Hypothesis or installing Hypothesis in Blackboard, please reach out to our support team. I think that I speak for our entire company when I say they are fantastic and we're incredibly proud of our support team. So feel free to reach out. They will get back to you quickly. I sometimes feel like they work 24 hours a day. They don't really, uh, but it sometimes seems like it. And they will even hop on a Zoom call with you to screen share and make sure everything is fixed or corrected or works as intended. If you are one of our partners, you get access to our success team calendars and you can work with us one-on-one -on -one as needed. Uh, we also offer webinars or workshops specific to schools. We do content specific workshops or discipline specific workshops. We also have a variety of advanced workshops on things like using images and videos in annotations. And then we have a regular show called Liquid Margins on using social annotation across disciplines or across contexts. If you take a look at the slide deck, there are here are some of the recent shows that we have done. Feel free to check some of these out for inspiration or ideas on using social annotation in your own courses. And if you don't have Hypothesis at your school, then feel free to reach out to our education team, education at hypothesis.is. If you do have Hypothesis at your school, you can reach out to our success team, success at hypothesis.is. And I'm gonna stick around for questions and Nate, if you have anything you wanna add or Franny or Daniel, um, we will stick around. You've done such a good job um, addressing people's questions uh, right as they come up, Aaron, that uh, I'm not sure that, that anything lingers. <clears throat> I agree, Aaron, you're pretty amazing. I've never seen you in action before. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks. Martha is, is asking about adding um, extra extra credits. So Martha, I think, um, and actually this might be a, a question Daniel might be able to help with, is once it's in the grade book, you can likely then categorize it correctly. So you could categorize it as under like say extra credit or under participation or whatever that looks like in your own grade book. That is my guess. Um, Daniel, if I'm misspeaking, then let me know. No, I think, I think you're right, Erin. Uh, um, that's my guess too. I, I'm not entirely certain, but I, I think that's how it goes today. Mm -hmm. So you would create it first and then categorize it in the grade book later. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I think. <laughs> and so Roberto, I just want to say this, I was actually a Spanish undergrad and I tell this story a lot that Spanish is my second language. And um, had I had something like hypothesis, I mean, it, this was decades ago, so we didn't have like Blackboard then. <laughs> uh, but had I had something like Hypothesis, 
I would have been a much better student uh, because I was, you know, I had to read all these novels in Spanish and this is my second language and I felt so lost all of the time. Um, and then to be in classes with these native speakers, I didn't want to come to class and then say, I'm so lost, I don't understand. And so I just sat in the corner and listened to them speak during discussions and had a really hard time getting involved. Entonces, podemos hablar en español. Sí, si quieres. Um, Sandra has a, a question, um, but I'm not sure. And maybe Sandra, you can clarify. You're asking about links. Um, just want to provide you with what you need. So she's asking about how to get information or links. Which links would you like, Sandra? And we can unmute you too, if you'd like. Yeah. One thing Sandra is, you know, that many, almost anything in red in the slides is a link as Aaron sh showed by clicking on something. Um, and so if you grab the, uh, oh. if you grab the slides there at that, if you can follow that link, even on your phone, um, uh, or we could email it to you later. You will actually, actually, you will get an email with when the uh, automatically when the recording uh, of this is completed, and it will also include a link to the slide. So, Sandra, you don't even have to worry; it will come to your email inbox. Sorry, it took me a minute to remember that we're going to do that. Of course, we will. Por supuesto. <laughs> Actually, there is some really exciting use now in uh, Mexico, uh, and we're hoping to have a liquid margins episode. Uh, Roberto, this might be of interest to you, um, all in Spanish, um, with some of the educators down there who are doing really interesting things. So stay tuned for information about that. And if anyone wants to make sure that they're, um, they get information about like future liquid margins episodes, um, you can subscribe to get emails from Hypothesis because I know everybody wants more email, right? You can't have too much email. Um, I'll put a link in. Actually, it's at the bottom of every web page we have, but you can also um, subscribe from our directly from our Contact Us page. There's a link to that. Julio, I would say absolutely. Yes. Um, so Julio asked if we can provide the presentation to other instructors. I would say yes. Really, I really want to uh, thank you, Aaron, for uh, I really I learned a lot actually <laughs> during this. First of all, I learned what a great presenter you are. Oh my gosh, you're so good. <laughs> Thanks. I do it all day. <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perperfect, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and also th thanks to Daniel for uh, Blackboard's collaboration and getting this set up. We really appreciate that. Did you want to say anything in farewell, Daniel? We're not letting you talk. Oh, nothing in particular. Thing. Just wanted to thank you again for for inviting me, Aaron. Such a great presenter. Same to goes to Jeremy. Um, I appreciate it, Aaron. Um, and such great questions I saw as well, like the, on the ins and outs of the app. If there's anything else that um, I can help with in terms of how the functionality looks like on Blackboard, I'm happy to get those questions as well and um, get get answers for those and get them addressed internally with our team as well. So. I think that's that's about it on my end. Thank you so much, Daniel. Really appreciate it.